This is Alicupa, Pennsylvania, a place known for its productive steel mill. Not only that, it's a location for four NFL Hall of Famers. Yes, four of them. Mike Ditka, one of the best of his generation. Another one, one of the top 100 greatest players ever, Tony Dorsett. Also another top 100 greatest players ever. And arguably probably one of the most underrated corners of all time, Ty Law. You know, the most recent NFL Hall of Famers, People won't admit it, but early one of the top 10 greatest cornerbacks of all time, the real Reeves. Now, this is a place where dreams do come true, where people come together, work together to be great. One tight community. You got dreams? Go for it. Grind until it happens. And for me, <laughs> I just want to be that fifth player to have my gold jacket. Hey, yo. Have you made your decision about where you want to go? To be completely honest with y'all, I really have to give him a stomp. I don't know what he's waiting on. He need to bring his ass back to Philly. Bro, shut the fuck up and let the man talk. Damn. I'm just saying, yo. I mean, I'm just saying. Look, talk it over with your pops and see if he can give you some advice on what you need to do. No, bro did have a point. Returning home didn't sound like a bad idea. Gotta call my pops on this one. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. Yo, they was right. I didn't make up my mind where I want to go to college. What better person to talk to than the person who's been there? My father. <laughs> you see, my father was born and raised in Aliquippa. So he understood the definition of hard work, sticking together, grinding it out, making your dreams happen. And he did play both sides of the ball, too, playing receiver and cornerback. Now, even though he was a three-star recruit, that didn't stop my father from accepting a scholarship to Ohio State University. You see, at Ohio State, he came in as a fifth-string cornerback. He worked hard because he knew what hard work meant. He didn't know where to get you. And eventually, this kid was a starter halfway through his season. And let's just say, the rest is history. Now you might ask yourself, how did I go from Pennsylvania to Texas? Well, it's pretty simple. As dominant as my father was, that potential really didn't live up to expectations when he went to the NFL. Especially being drafted by the Dallas Cowboys, which is only pretty much less than an hour away. So that's how I ended up being here, raised here. For me, it was simple. I worked hard, I wanted to get it better, and I knew what hard work meant. So a lot of people say I might have a mate because of who, who my dad was, because of my name. Well, it wasn't simple. I had to work hard. So everything that I got at this point, it wasn't because of my dad. It was because of me and my crime. Now I got to be honest with you all. Beginning my freshman season, I was up there just having fun, running wild, going crazy. I mean, hell, I was a freshman, so I really didn't take it that serious. Same thing for my sophomore year. I was out there having fun with teammates. No colleges came calling, so I didn't see the point of taking it serious. But by the time my junior season rolled around, I made up in my mind. If I really wanted this, I really had to start taking it serious. And that's when I really started going crazy, cutting down on turnovers, more touchdowns. Of course, I'm better known for being a dual threat quarterback. So the rest of yards wasn't going anywhere. When I really started taking it serious, my senior season passed over 3,000 yards, nearly 40 touchdowns, cut down on the interceptions, over 1,000 yards. Let's just say the big schools came calling. Now my four years at Allen, let's just say I put up some crazy numbers. You can't deny it. But one downfall that a lot of colleges want me to change position because of interception. I mean, Georgia. What's more to say? They wanted me to switch a linebacker. Now, y'all know, I've never played on the defense side of the ball, so that wasn't going to happen. For Ohio State, same thing. They want me to come off the edge, and that wasn't happening. 
definitely wasn't happy. Great school and all, but to be able to turn back home will be something special once again. I am not, I repeat, I will not play on the defense side of the ball. I'm not an edge rusher. The cream of the crop, Alabama. Because of my rushing yards, I do with their ability. They want to play running back. Now, a new coach coming in, I didn't know how it would fit. But all I know, I'm a quarterback. Now, later that same night, I went over to talk to my dad because, you know, I had a tough choice to make up where I wanted to go to college at. A couple things he told me. One, I was not going to be the best player on the field. Two, I was going to have to work twice as hard because next man, it's always going to grind harder than me. So being that I wanted to play quarterback, I was always going to be on me. And three, I just had to make a decision for myself. So that talk my dad really helped out. Ultimately, I'm going to. I decided to go to Temple. Temple, you might add, well, I wanted to build something special. I didn't want to take the traditional easy route. That's my dad just said. The ground's going to be hard. Coming in as the third string quarterback, I knew that uphill battle and that ground going to be hard. And where I'm from, that's built Demi to work hard. I started off practice feeling feeling myself but after that my teammates had to let me know yeah you freshman just hold it down just keep calm but one thing they couldn't take from me man i was gonna tote that rock my very first practice my culture was proud of me man but i i just wasn't satisfied not at all going against our very first game of the season against notre dame we knew we wasn't gonna win that game hell we'll be happy if we even put up a field goal and Notre Dame put it to us, man. <laughs> it wasn't even no contest as we end up getting routed. 38 to 7. But like I say, at least we put seven on the board. Very next practice, bro. When I tell you I went all out in this practice and the culture was impressed, even my teammates was impressed compared to the first practice. As I see, my grind, my hard work, it's going to pay off. I'm going to be QB1. It's just a matter of time when that's going to happen. Finally got my number caught in week eight against Army. We was blowing them out the water. So coach put me in. My very first touch in college football, you know, going for a wrecking touchdown. My second touch of my young career, Went for a whopping 51 rushing yards. Not only that, I got my first passing touchdown, man. You couldn't tell me nothing. I was on cloud nine. But second and sixth right here, we go into a triple option. Once again, I pick up the first down break, two tackles, they nearly broke a third. Lucky I stepped out of bounds. But I end up game with 33 passing yards with a touchdown, 72 passing yards, and we end up winning the game 63 to seven. Now, not only did we finish four and eight on the season, one and seven conference, bro, this losing, something I wasn't used to. Now, after the Army game, we lost five straight games. The losing, that wasn't something that was in me. I wasn't happy about it. So my very first practice in my sophomore season, bro, I just went crazy. It just like, my grind that summer, my studying, it was all starting to pay off, and my teammates can see it. The coaches can see it. It was just something different about me. Bro, I wanted that QB1 spot, and I knew I was going to get it. It was just a moment of time of when the coach was going to be smart enough to put me as QB1, especially since we started off the second season 0-5, 0-2 in conference. Damn near dead last points per game. The bottom half and total offense in the country, bro, it didn't sit well with me. So I called a coach to have a meeting with him one on one. At this point, I did not say not one word because coach knew the frustration that was on my face. The hard work that I put in, each and every practice, studying the playbook. Hell, we was the laughing stock of college football. The only team not to win one game. So coach. He gave me one promise, one opportunity to prove myself that I belong at QB1. I said, coach, 
say less. The next practice, I tore it up. And for now, I was QB1. I had to go out there and prove myself. The very first play against Houston, I hit my teammate Walker on a digging route, and he turned it up to the sideline, 75 yards to the house. My very first pass at QB1. You talking about pump excitement? I was ready. Second and three, I take the read option, do what I do best. I pick up 16 yards. Next play, second, first and 10, a play action pass, hang in the pocket, delivered to Anderson Jr. for 17. Second and 12, another play action. Broke one tackle. When I sense pressure, I'm gone. I'm up out of there. I'm the best athlete on the field. Or at least that's what I think. Well, second and 14, 7-7 seven, seven, the ball game, as I just said. I feel like I'm the best athlete on the field. Turned out a silent I nearly scored before I get bumped out of bounds. First and 10 through a quick strike to the receiver. Second passing touchdown of the game. That audition that coach gave me, it was looking pretty sweet. It was looking like I was pulling away to, to be QB number one. The third and 13 right here, connection to Anderson. And that pretty much sealed the deal, man. I went on ahead and went 319 passing yard, two passing touchdowns, 143 yards on the ground. Hey, I feel like I got this locked up. With that type of performance you had in the last game, me and the entire coaching staff have decided that moving forward, you're our QB1. So congratulations. Yeah, coach, really appreciate that. I was always taught, man, the hard work pays off. And since I got here, I, I just been paying my dues. So once again, man, appreciate you, coach. Just thought I'd be the first to let you know, but I gotta go now so I can start preparing for our next game.